My name is Noah Carney, and I'm the lead editor for Dr. Penn's main YouTube channel, the one you're watching this on. And I also have a channel where I go over problems like this that are high school level contest problems, as well as covering a variety of different course material that you might see in high school, like pre-calculus, algebra 2, trigonometry, as well as entry level physics and economics. So if you guys are interested in that, I'll leave my channel link in the description down below, and maybe I'll put a card up in the corner or something like that. Okay, so let's get into this problem. So I have a nice number puzzle for the channel today. Today we want to express this long gnarly number as a rational number. And we want to be motivated by this question, which is what keeps or hinders this number from being rational in the first place? And the pretty obvious answer to that is all these square roots. The square root over this big number here, the square root of 3, the square root over this big number here, and this square root of 3. But this 15 in the bottom doesn't really matter. As long as we can rationalize the top, then we're good to go. And I just want to point out quickly before we move on that this problem was from the LACC math contest in, I believe, 2011. But if I'm wrong, I'll put in an edit maybe over here somewhere. So let's go ahead and jump into this. We have the square root of 4 plus 2 times the square root of 3 minus the square root of 28 plus 10 times the square root of 3. And I think these are important because we have the same radical underneath the larger radical in both cases. So let's go ahead and focus these down and see if we can remove the big radical and see if this smaller radical underneath figures itself out. So let's see what we can do to this first number to remove this radical. And generally the way we want to do that is by completing the square or figuring out whether this thing is a perfect square itself. If we want to write this thing as a perfect square, then the two terms that we're going to want to use are going to involve this square root of 3 and a constant integer. We want to set this thing at 4 plus 2 times the square root of 3 equal to a plus b times the square root of 3 all squared. So we have a perfect square over here so that this 2 in the exponent cancels with this long square root above 4 plus 2 times the square root of 3 here. Okay, great. Now let's expand this out and see what we get. So we'll have a squared plus 2ab squared of 3 plus b squared times 3. And this is still equal to 4 plus 2 times the square root of 3. Now this a squared plus 3 times b squared is going to give us this 4 here. That's because those are the only terms on either side of the equation that don't have this square root of 3 attached to it. So I'll go ahead and color code this. Everything with purple underlined has a square root of 3 attached and everything yellow underlined does not. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a system of a two equations. So our yellow equation is going to be 4 equals a squared plus b squared times 3. We could write that as 3b squared, it doesn't matter, I just left it in the form it was in down here. And then we have 2 times the square root of 3 is equal to 2ab times the square root of 3. But in this purple equation, we can see that the square root of 3 quickly cancels. So we'll have 2 equals 2ab, but then we can also divide a 2 out of this, so we'll have 1 equals a times b. That's great. Now that we have that, we can use this to make some sort of substitution that we plug back into our yellow equation up here. So I'll go ahead and substitute a for b. So that will give us b equals 1 over a. That's great. Now we can plug this into this equation up here. So let's go ahead and write that down underneath. I'll go ahead and write that in yellow because we're now working with the yellow equation. So we have 4 equals a squared stays the same, but b squared is changed to 1 over a. So this is going to be plus 3 over a squared. Now let's get rid of this a squared in the denominator. So let's multiply it up probably into everything. So we'll have 4a squared equals a to the fourth plus 3. And now we have a quadratic equation where our term is not a, but in fact a squared that we're going to be solving for. So let's go ahead and write that equation down on this last line here. That'll be a to the fourth minus 4a squared plus 3 equals 0. So let's go ahead and erase all this, bring this up, and continue working. Okay, so in the last word we found that a to the fourth minus 4a squared plus 3 is equal to 0, and that b is equal to 1 over a, where a and b are defined over here as 
these variables that we're searching for to make this thing inside this radical a perfect square in order to cancel it out. So let's go ahead and solve this quadratic equation for a squared using the quadratic formula. So that's going to be a squared equals plus four, because this is minus minus four, plus minus the square root of 16 minus four times one times three. So that's 12 all over two a, so that's just two. But now let's simplify this. So this is going to be four plus minus the square root of 16 minus 12 is four over two. But this is going to be four plus or minus two over two. And so we will in fact get one or three here because this four plus two is going to be six over two, which is three. And four minus two will be two over two, which is one. So our two solutions for A here are one and three, which means B can be either one or one third. So let's go ahead and write that down. B can be one or one third. So let's go ahead and write this information over here and then start working with this radical on the right hand side. Okay, so I've logged that information right here where we have our two order pairs of A equals one, B equals one and a equals three, b equals one third right here. And now we're gonna start working on this right-hand side radical and we're gonna follow the same strategy. We wanna find c and d that satisfies this equation right here. So let's go ahead and foil c plus d times the square root of three out because we have this two here. So let's go ahead and foil that out. We'll have 28 plus 10 times the square root of three equals c squared plus two c d times the square root of three plus d squared times three. And we're gonna get a similar structure because we have the same form of the equation. We have c plus d times the square root of three down here and we have a plus b times the square root of three up there. So now we're gonna do the same thing we did last time. We're going to pair off the stuff that has the square root of three in it and the stuff that does not have the square root of three in it. And I'll do that with orange and green this time. Orange will say it will be the color with the square root of three so that's these two numbers here. And green will be the stuff that does not have the square root of three. And that's these three terms right here. So now let's make a orange equation and a green equation like we did last time. So for our orange equation, we will have 10 times the square root of three equals two C D times the square root of three. But again, we can cancel these square roots of three from each other. And we'll have 10 equals two C D. But now we can divide both sides by two and we have five equals C D. So now we're getting somewhere because we can use this to again substitute for either C or D. I'll choose to solve it for D in this case because we solved for B in the first case. So that'll give us D equals five over C. Now let's plug this back in to our green equation, which I'm about to write down. And that will be 28 equals c squared plus d squared times three. But now we can plug this green box into this green equation up here and substitute c in for d. So we'll get 28 equals c squared plus three times five over c squared. But now we have this five up here, whereas before we only had a one. So we also have to square this five so we'll have 28 equals c squared plus three times 25 over c squared. But that's going to be 28 equals c squared plus 75 over c squared. So let's go ahead and multiply everything by c squared and write it right over here. That'll give us 28 c squared equals c to the fourth plus 75. Okay, but just like last time, we have a quadratic equation that lets us solve for c squared. So let's go ahead and write that simply right here. c to the fourth minus 28 c squared plus 75 equals zero. Perfect, now let's bring this up to the top left right here, and then we'll solve it and we should be home free. Okay, so I've cleaned up the board and we are left with our quadratic equation in terms of c squared and I brought over this d equals five over c equation as well. 
So let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula on this thing and solve for c squared. So that's going to give us c squared equals 28 plus minus the square root of 28 squared minus 4 times 75. And that's going to be all over 2. Okay, but simplifying this a little bit, we can use a calculator or just quickly multiply 28 by 28 to see that we get 784 here. And then we have 4 times 75 over here. And quickly multiplying that out, we can get 300. So that's going to be minus 300. And this is all over 2 still. But now 784 minus 300 is just 484. So we have 28 plus minus the square root of 484 over 2. But now does 484 have a rational root? It turns out it does, and that root is 22. So let's go ahead and bring this up to this side right here. And we'll have 28 plus minus 22 over 2. So if we add 22, we'll get 50 here. So one possibility for c squared is 50 over 2, which is 25. The other possibility for c squared is 28 minus 22 over 2, which is 6 over 2, which is 3. And one thing I wanted to point out is that this over here should be a equals the square root of 3 because we never took the square root. And this 3 under the denominator for b should also have a square root. But that also eliminates the possibility for this solution because what we're trying to do is rationalize this radical in the first place. And so adding more radicals in doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So the solution we probably want to go with is this one here. Likewise, if we take c squared equals 3, we'll end up with the square root of 3. So the solution that we'll want to take here is this c squared equals 25 or c equals 5 case here. And that also gives us d equals 1 based on this orange equation right here. So now let's plug these values in for C and D and these values in for A and B as they are our only rational solutions. And let's see where that takes us from there once we've cleaned up the board. Okay, so now we're ready to make our substitutions using our solutions of A equals one, B equals one, C equals five, and D equals one with these two substitutions where we change this right here into this perfect square and this right here into this perfect square. So let's go ahead and make these substitutions and plug them in to this original expression up here. So that'll take this first expression, 4 plus 2 times the square root of 3, to be the square root of 1 plus the square root of 3 squared. That's because a equals 1 and b equals 1. But now we have our second substitution. That's going to be the square root of 5 plus 1 times the square root of 3, all squared. But the reason we've done this in the first place is to eliminate these radicals with this 2 in the exponent here. That's why we made them perfect squares. So let's go ahead and cancel those. Let's cancel this 2 and this root here. And let's cancel this root here. And this 2 right here. I just want to quickly note that this is all over 15 still. That will leave us with 1 plus the square root of 3 minus 5 plus the square root of 3. That's all over 15. But now we still have two more radicals, the square root of 3 and the square root of 3. But they cancel because this minus sign carries over into everything in this term. So that's going to be 1 minus 5 over 15. And that is very clearly a negative 4 over 15 which is rational. And this is our solution to this problem, and I think that's enough for now.